If we were looking as uh, angel investors or venture capital investors, what happened in the last 12 months was insane. And your pure speculation is, if I buy this at a discount pre-ICO, will it at least list and will it pop by 50 to 100%? And therefore, I don't care that it's crap. I will double my money or make more. Now, Mark, if you look at the ICOs out there, how many will survive? I would say, and I totally agree with you, Mark, because it's so driven by speculation and by short-term uh, return that we will see far more than the 90 point whatever something ratio because you have literally a few people just doing ICOs to take the money and run away. But actually, the biggest problem for all of these things is most of these models are built on businesses having users. And when I ask these companies that have got the utility models to say, how are you going to get users? The answer is typically airdrop. <laughs> 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 and I think if we can instead look at, let's say, uh, in some of the developing worlds, tokenizing investments in food service companies, entertainment companies, where they become liquid very quickly, where there's something that is not as heavy as an IPO, because we don't have to have things as heavy as an mm -hmm. IPO, but there is more transparency. It allows these assets to be traded. It allows them to be swappable. And it allows investors to make sensible decisions themselves about what they do and what they do with their money, and then how the money can be played. If the ICO world was a baby, right now the baby would be three months old and wouldn't be able to walk, stand up yet. But there's so much uh, reason to be uh, you know, um, uh, positive about the space too, right? So I firmly believe that innovation and, uh, and certainly inventions are only possible with a lot of slack. You have people that either are self-financed, maybe not even with the ICO, just by purely being early in the space that can allow themselves to try and experiment and come up with novel, you know, novel ways. I mean, there's people that do nothing else that code and travel, you know, and meet, you know, the rest of the world and, and build incredible networks. And right now, you know, Switzerland, you know, to just to make the bridge there, you know, we have a little bit of a regulatory arbitrage opportunity here, and we should take advantage of that. Other jurisdictions do this all the time. I think we should be um, confident about it and, uh, and seize on the opportunity as well. So, and in order to do that, we have to follow some best practices, which there are many people that can tell you how it's properly done, and there's law firms that have done it a few times, and or several times. And then, luckily, there's people in this space that are now building the infrastructure physically and, you know, uh, legally to a certain extent, that you can rely as an investor, you know, if you want to speculate, uh, you can rely on as an investor that, you know, you have recovery options or, you know, at least you know you're on more or less safe ground. We're really, really early days and paper money, securities, equities, those sometimes took 20, 30, 50, 150 years in different jurisdictions to become mature. So I think we're learning really, really fast and communities like this are fantastic ways to develop best practice. But at the moment, we aren't even close to good. We came after lunch full of energy and happy, and now we are just telling us 99% <laughs> of the ICO <laughs> will go down. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to hear something about best, best practices. What needs to be done? Mm. To, well, to like avoid to the risks. Mm -hmm. So there's over 1,800 ICOs in the pipeline that are being rated by ICORating.net and a couple of dozen other rating agencies. So already you see that there is a certain amount of marketing hyperbole, and it's very hard to know if the ICO ratings have conducted in-depth due diligence or if they just filled out a form and took a fee. So there's a lot of... Uh, marketing money going into raising the brands and there's obviously a lot of over promising under delivering instead of under promising over delivering so credibility gap has grown very wide this year there's been a lot of disappointment so even though all of us on the stage are committed to the industry and bullish and all of us have skills and interests and networks to contribute and everyone in this audience has huge potential to enter this industry at a very high level of institutional grade investment quality I think that's our challenge is to use our best skills to distinguish wheat from chaff and a more colorful language that Mar Mark, uh, you know, <laughs> that our friend has used. So we really <laughs> have, we all have to be rigorous in our own way based on our expertise that we all bring to the table. And, and there's a huge pool of expertise in this room. And I think we should all be networking and relying on each other's judgment because that'll elevate the quality, quality of the industry.